Hello, and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Yale, underscore, underscore, and I'm going to be showcasing an any percent run of Mystical Ninja starring Goemon for the Nintendo 64. To my right, I got Von Jim, who uh, has never run this game, but he was learning to run it and knows more about it than anyone else in this building, so he's going <laughs> to sit next to me. All right, so time starts on reset, so I'll do a countdown, I suppose. Um, three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. All right, so first thing I'm going to point out is that um, I'm using a N64 controller pack so I can save throughout the run, and in speedruns typically you don't use that because um, there's extra dialogue boxes, but uh, unfortunately there's a lot of potential to softlock in this game, so if that happens, hopefully I can uh, not lose too much time by saving everywhere. One thing with this game is that the soft locks, you can't just exit stage. You're literally, your run is dead. Yeah, like your, your game freezes. So right here is the first trick in the game. Um, I'm gonna go for... Alright, so I, I tried to do something there called a Macquarie, which is essentially when you, when you get up warp by either an object or um, like a weird collision box, you can slash your weapon at the same time and it shoots you forward really fast and it just saves some walking time right there. Um, but you'll notice I just walked over a bunch of water, and normally you need an item called the chain pipe to get across that area, um, but we're using some exploits to avoid that item. Yeah, so I'm actually running straight for the first castle of the game, rather than going to Mount Fuji and grabbing the chain pipe. And uh, I can skip the intro cutscene for this game, which is a few minutes long. But unfortunately, I can't skip this grind that I have to do for coins throughout the run. Um, there's two specific places where you really need coins to progress in the story. Uh, one of them, you need to buy a cucumber from an old man for 800 coins to progress like a story plot or something. Uh, <laughs> and you also need 300 coins to pay a witch who will talk to the dead and also progress the story. Um, as a disclaimer, I've never played this game casually, I've only speed on it, and uh, so I don't really know the lore that well, but I'll do my best. Honestly, the fact that this is right at the beginning of the run is a big turn off, especially when I started trying to l learn. It takes a lot of time to stack the coins, and Yale makes it look pretty easy, but actually getting the full stack of four coins is a bit harder than it looks. Yeah, it's actually really difficult. The movement in this game like, isn't very straightforward compared to other platformers, he's kind of janky and the camera is pretty bad, so... Yeah, the biggest thing is just like getting into a rhythm. But it's not that big of a deal to miss a few coins, as you can see, I'm not getting all of them. If I were to get all of them, I would have exactly a thousand by the end of it, but I'm gonna pretend I got all of them. So maybe while we do this, you can explain the uh, movement. So in this game, when you run not vertically, but along diagonally the along the wall, you actually conserve more speed, right? Yeah, it's called edge running, and uh, I don't know how it works, but you just run along the wall and it makes you move forward very slightly faster, and it adds up over the course of the run. So right here is a, another place where you would normally use the chain pipe to get across these gaps, but uh, you can actually throw the coins that I just collected as weapons, or as a weapon to like kill enemies and stuff, and if you jump when you throw it, it'll actually uh, slows your descent slightly so you can get across those gaps pretty easily. Right here is an example of a kill all room, and I need to kill all the enemies to make a key spawn. And the nice thing about this game is that when you do kill, or when you do walk into a, a room like this, all the enemies always spawn in the same, uh, same place. So as long as you do the same movement, uh, it's consistent. It's fun. Still pretty difficult to aim though. Yeah, yeah, it takes some practice. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of glitches in this uh, first castle, but there's a lot of cool movement and optimal rooms and stuff, so it's pretty fun. So this is another room you have to kill enemies, but you only have to kill five, not all of them, because they just keep spawning. Oh, sweet. So I got a, a glitch right there 
uh, where I saved a few seconds by skipping the key spawning animation because I killed the last two enemies at the same time. I don't normally get that, so that's cool. You also noting, notice that whenever I can, I kill enemies as long as they're not too out of the way. That's because they drop coins. Another kill all of them right here. Oh, I missed. Oh, he dodged me. It's alright. Another thing you might notice is that when I walk through doorways, uh, I'm like jumping immediately. And that's because uh, when you walk through doorways, there's a little animation of going on walking slowly until you get control of them. And you can skip that animation by just spamming jump. And also it lets you uh, choose where you want to go straight out of the doorway. So you can like, straight, like jump straight left or whatever instead of going walking forward and then having to go left. You'll also notice that sometimes when I'm doing Ryu hovers across gaps, I'm like clipping up onto the ledge when I swing my weapon or whatever. Um, that's only possible on ledges that you can ledge grab. Um, upcoming, there's a pretty tough trick that is a big turnoff for a lot of new runners, and it's the second part of a chain pipe skip. And it's actually Japanese exclusive because for whatever reason, when you jump, when you're in the water and you jump in like the corner, you can get a little bit of extra height on the Japanese version that isn't there in the US version. And, uh, yeah, you can use that extra height to get a damage boost. It's right here. So basically what Yale is doing here, and he's trying to bait the shot to be as high as possible so he gets the damage boost and that pushes him right over the edge. That's another trick that normally would require the chain pipe. Correct. And again, I can't Ryu hover across that gap um, because I actually can't ledge grab those um, wedges. So even if I were to try to Ryu hover, I'd just hit the wall and fall and I wouldn't be able to pop up. But that trick is actually pretty precise. I believe it's only like three or four frames that you have a fur window. Hey Jim, do you mind looking for my water? I think it's around here somewhere. My mouth's getting pretty dry. Black water bottle somewhere. Maybe it's hidden. Thank you. Really, it's not out here, huh? Was it on the ground by the where I was sitting before, maybe? Wow, I did not think I was gonna make that jump. So uh upcoming here is a it's kinda like a text box skip. Uh, normally you're not allowed to move during these cutscenes, and uh I got it. So right here I'm moving, but normally you wouldn't be allowed able to do that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. That actually has a straw, so you don't have to tip it, but I appreciate the help. <laughs> so I actually, I got the, I got the glitch that lets me move during the, um, lets me move during the cutscene, but you have to still navigate your way down the hallway and into the door, and I got lost, so I didn't actually, I actually didn't have to say anything any time. Oops, not even throw coins here. So this is the boss for the first level. His name's Congo. I already kind of messed him up, but it's okay. Um, ideally, what I'm trying to do is get... He has two different phases. He has, like, this laser phase and, like, the fire phase. And ideally, I can get five hits on him before he finishes this laser phase. I don't think I'm going to. Let's see. If he shoots fire, I got it. All right, I got it, barely. So ideally what that does is allows me to get like another free quick cycle on him because he does the fire phase now. But if I were to take too long to get these five hits in on this laser cycle, I would actually kill him during his you know, fire cycle. And then I would skip the fire cycle and go straight into another laser cycle. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but basically you want to try to get five hits on him. Oh, so like right there I actually didn't do it somehow. I thought I was very early, but whatever. And it's actually like like right here I can like keep hitting him, but and it looks like I'm damaging him a lot. 
but the only times he's actually been getting damaged is when his chip, when his chin like chips off his pieces. All right, so that's Congo, and this is the first castle done. And this is the first of four miracle items that I'm going to be picking up throughout the run. So, to try to explain the lore somewhat, uh, I skipped the intro cutscene. And what happens in the intro is that going on, this dude is chilling with his friend Abisamaru in like a store or something, and they get chased out. I think because like Abisamaru starts stripping or something, because he's a goofball, and. While they're outside, they notice like a spaceship flying overhead, and it shoots a beam at the castle that we're inside of. And it goes from like, you know, like a Japanese Asian style castle to a very European style castle with spires and flags and all that stuff. So, um, we decided to come here and investigate. And this guy, the king of uh, Oedo, uh, believes he knows who is up to causing this trouble, so he's giving us this super pass so that we can access other areas of Japan and look for these bad guys. So coming up is a glitch that is very cool and saves a lot of time, but it's also dangerous. Um, it's called map glitch. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just holding C right basically the entire time I'm in this area. And I'm unloading everything, and then right there you saw the water pop up, and that's me letting go of C right to load everything. So when I hold C right for some reason, and C right is the map button, for whatever reason it unloads everything in the in my particular area, the water, the enemies, the coins, the loading zones even. And um, the main reason we do it is to save lag um, and to skip fighting a boss. Uh, but if you map glitch mistakenly in the wrong room, or if you happen to walk through a loading zone that, you know, that you're not normally supposed to in the run, you can actually freeze the game and it'll crash. Um, so it sounds like a really cool glitch, and it is Japanese exclusive. Uh, but it can be very dangerous. Like for instance, in this next room I walk through, I'm going to be map glitching to get rid of the water and all the enemies to reduce lag. But if I were to walk back through the door that I came through, I would actually crash the game. But for some reason, I can walk through this door over here, and it's fine. Good old going on. It's really fun. And this saves a lot of lag, and I'll be honest, when I started learning the, the run, one of the reasons why I didn't finish is because I kept, I kept screwing up the map glitch, glitches, and then you have to start it over again when I'm not trying to farm a thousand coins forever. Yeah, if you're like doing real runs without a memory card or a controller pack or whatever, um, if you soft lock, it's over. Like you have to restart the run, basically, which is not fun, especially when you're first trying to learn the game. Like when you first learn the game, it just feels good to finish a run. You know, it's like the same feeling I had when I was trying to learn OOT speedruns, and there's all these glitches that can, you know, kill the run. So it just feels good to finish a run. And this game is very similar. Well, we have some time here with you coming up. Uh, you should give us some beat. Oops, I didn't jump in time, bud. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, again, the music in this game is absolutely fire. And to make it even better, you can swip we switch weapons, and it makes an insane sound. So I'm actually, uh, if you're wondering why this field is so empty, I, mean, I am map glitching, yes. Um, this is probably the longest use of map glitch in one area, as well as probably it saves the most time throughout the run, I'd imagine. Right here, I would actually be triggering a the first boss that you'd fight, the first impact boss, excuse me. And um, before you fight each impact boss, impact is like this big um, robotic giant dude that all the characters get into and control and fight bigger bosses. And before those fights happen, there's um, always a really long cutscene and a really long musical picture. And we're actually going to hear it twice throughout the run, but we'd hear it a third time if I didn't hold the map glitch right there. So, so <laughs> it's kind of nice that that just happened. So if you notice, I just fell into like that little well thing and like froze for a few moments before I could run again. That's what's called a landing animation. And for whatever reason, when you jump in this game, it can even be like on level ground. I don't know what causes it, but you can get the, a landing animation and it just wastes a few seconds. There's like some hoaxes I have throughout the run that I do to try to avoid them, but they're all hoaxes. 
one of the cool things about this game is you get to play multiple characters that have multiple different abilities, and we are now meeting one of them. Yeah, um, this is Yai. Um, she is a detective, and she's also after the same baddies as we are. So in an effort to destroy the... I forget what they're called, the Shogun Warriors or something. We're going to team up. And she's uh, one of the coolest characters in the game, I'd say. There's a, there's a glitch I'll be doing actually right after this cutscene called Ben K. Skip, and it utilizes a, a glitch called the Macori. And Macori is essentially a frame-perfect input. It's the same trick I went for at the beginning of the run that I messed up. So I'm going for a frame-perfect slash when I up-warp on this uh, ladder. And the... Um, it's a pain in the butt, let me just say that. This is like another trick that really turns off new beginners, or new runners. Like, this uh, saves like five minutes over the casual strat if you get it like one of the first tries. And it's not five fun minutes. No. You're just running around the pond basically catching fish, yeah. fishes for, for four or five minutes. Yeah. So I'm trying to like get caught on this ladder like that. So right there I actually got the glitch, but I had a bad angle. And not only do you have to get the frame perfect trick, you also have to have your controller pointing in the right direction, so it's really fun. Um, that dude I talked to is actually the dude I'm trying to skip. His name is Ben K. And normally, like Jim said, you have to go fishing and you, uh... From, uh, once you're done fishing, you get an item, uh... It's like, it's like a log or something, and you use the log to fight him, and he's honored that you beat him, so he lets you pass or something. And this is the kind of trick that can take either like 30 seconds or five minutes, so I'm kind of hoping I get it relatively soon. Yeah, and the reward for that skip is so worth it that, to be fair, it's, it's really worth... Uh oh <laughs> <laughs> So this is what happens when you... Another thing that can happen when you get the glitch, but you have a bad angle. Yep, see ya, going on. He voids out for like 30 seconds. Thankfully, I like to... If I am struggling with this trick, a uh, hoax I have is leaving the area and re-coming and uh, re-answering it, so... Come on, buddy. Just get the frame perfect trick with a good angle. It's not that hard. And there's other Macquarie's throughout the run that I go for, but this is like the only one that's like absolutely mandatory in order to progress without having to do the casual strat that takes forever. So, like, I really hope when I get this thing soon. Come on, bud. And it's so stupid. There's like no setup. You just like flick the stick and mash beat and you get like a muscle memory for it that works. I believe I haven't given up hope yet. All right, I'm gonna read. Whoa, that was nifty. Pulling out my hook strat. So the really fun thing about speedrunning this game at like a relatively high level, I guess. I'm like two minutes off world record. I don't know how high level that is, but. If you like miss this trick for like more than like five times, you basically have to reset, and it's really not fun. Yeah, you gotta That's, farm the coins again and go through. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, it's just like 15 minutes in the run, so if you fail it, it's, you're wasting 15 minutes of your life, and it's really fun. But it could be at the end of the run, so it could be worse. And the beginning of the run isn't really the most um, and enjoyable. Mm, yeah, most enjoyable part. Yeah, it kind of starts off slow, and even for like the next 10 minutes or so, the run it's pretty slow. But then once we start getting all the glitches, all the tricks, and unlocking all the abilities, we can start exploiting the game really bad. Man, I wish I was really hoping I'd get this first try so this wouldn't happen because this is a classic, classic Ben K right here. I've had several practice streams that look just like this. It's really fun. Come on, going on, please. Oh, bye. This trick, <laughs> it's so much fun. It's freaking bullcrap. FBC. <laughs> Can someone ban Robber Robber from the chat, please? Thank you very much. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we got the trick. Bob, I was about to split. Thank you, Jim. The one person in the room at 3 a.m. No, 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 no. There's Taki sleeping on the couch there. All right, well, I'm imagining that she's clapping in my mind instead of being she's passed probably out. probably clapping in her dreams. Wow, oh, okay. All right, so I got Ben K. Skip. Cool. It didn't take too much time, I suppose. 
So right there I map glitched again to save the lag, right here I map glitching to save lag. Um, you'll notice that I was throwing Ryu to go across that big gap, but I wasn't always throwing Ryu, even though it looked like I was going to. That's because only three coins can uh, be showing on the screen at one time, so... If you throw three and they don't hit anything, then... Um, you can't. You can, you can like, keep throwing them and get the benefits of the Ryu hover, but you won't actually waste the money, which is nice. So right here um, is the biggest reason why we map glitch to reduce lag. So this is what the game looks like if I don't map glitch. Um, it's literally like half speed. All the enemies, all the textures, like it's just terrible. So normally in a run I'd be map glitching until I enter the loading zone, but I figured it'd just show off how absolutely perfectly optimized the coding of this game was. <laughs> So right here, um, I don't know why um, they use dragons to fly around in Japan, but apparently they do. <laughs> and this dragon has something wrong going on with it, apparently. Um, and uh, I need to figure out what's going on. He's triggered. He's triggered. But I guess I'll spill the beans. Um, there's a machine that's controlling this dragon, mine controlling it, and we have to destroy the machine. And there's a possible 15-second um, tech skip I could get. Um, in this game, there's several places where you can pause on the frame that a tech skip will pop up, and uh, you can actually skip that text box and all the resulting text boxes uh, for quite a while. You know, depending on the cutscene and the text boxes that you're trying to skip, it, you can save a different amount of time. But this one actually saves quite a bit. All right, so I got a second try. Cool. So right here, normally there's a text box that shows up, and I'll, you know, a lot of text you have to skip, but I happen to get the text skip, so that's cool. And um, one thing about pausing in this game is that it's not like OOT, where you can like pause buffer frame by frame. If you pause the, if you like pause and unpause and repause frame perfectly, like as quickly as you can do it, you will still end up skipping one frame. So I actually paused two frames early for that. Uh, text skip. I believe it was two frames early. And so... Okay, sorry. Getting hit by this guy on the dragon is actually terrible. And while you have the iframes, you like glitch out everywhere and you always fall off and I would have to run all the way to the back and run all the way up here and talk to this dude again and restart the fight. But if you stand still, it doesn't happen. So that's what I was doing there. The trajectory of those balls are always the same, so... Yeah, this is like a safe spot, just like standing in the spike, they always miss you. I don't know if they're if they always go in the same area per se, but But they never go there. Right. For some reason they just never hit you there. Alright, so um, this part of the like if you can get a good run past this part, then you're on it. Then you This is like getting out of lobby in the one twenty star. Well, you're actually on a run if you can get to this point, it's nice. If you can get a first try Ben K and get that tech skip, mm, you're on some hot pace. So this is um, the dragon. It was actually a kid named Koryuta, who I believe is like the son of the dragon god. And he got kidnapped by the bad guys and has no recollection of what's happened to him over the past however long he's been hypnotized. <laughs> I don't exactly know how long. But um, the bad guys are using his dragon ability to um, kidnap kidnap kids across Japan so that they could join their dance troupe. And um, believe it or not, I believe that's actually how the plot goes. Um, so the bad guys, I don't know if I've explained this yet, but the bad guys in this game are like uh, theater stars. And they're already popular in Japan. However, they want to become even more popular and they want to become, they want to have Japan be a glorious stage for them, and they want, you know, their audience to be filled with adoring fans. And for some reason, they feel like kidnapping people will make that happen. So, that's what they're doing. Yeah, it's weird. I really wish we could read the story, because those, those laughing tracks... Yeah. Sounds funny. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but there's actually laugh tracks, like, in the cutscenes. <laughs> I don't know why they're laughing, because I can't read the text, and I've never played this casually, so... <laughs> So right here, I'm uh, 
gonna go into this town real quick because I just got an item called the flute from Koryuya. Uh, I, I forget what his name is, but from the dragon kid. And basically, what that flute does is uh, lets us teleport wherever we want across the um, across the world. He takes us to uh, any coffee shop, any town, any dungeon I believe that we've been to. So I just wanted to run down to that town real quick and trigger the warp point. Koryuta. Koryuta. And you'll notice again, I am map glitching in all of these rooms because normally there are boulders that fall down and it's really laggy and it's hard to have the optimal lines, so. And right now I'm on my way to get Fire Rio. Um, it's a special attack that Goemon has where he can charge up his Rio shots and instead of doing the normal one damage, he can do three damage. But um, it's actually mandatory that we get this item because it's the only way that we can enter one of the dungeons. We can like light up three torches. So the route changed recently, right? Uh... I don't think it was recent. Uh, I don't... There is a newer route. So I think this run has been done at two um, like marathon type events in the past. One of them was GDQ in like 2013. Um, one of them was I believe Calithon in... 2016, maybe, and um, back then they were doing different routes compared to the one I'm doing here. I don't know when this route was discovered, but the nice thing about this route is that there's a town that you have to backtrack to a couple times throughout the run, and you only have to backtrack to that town once rather than twice, and um, that saves 30 seconds because of this uh, long teleporting cutscene. So, once again, another use of map glitch. This time, I am skipping a power-up that is required for going on to move these uh, metal boxes right here. Uh, it's like a Super Saiyan power-up, his hair turns yellow and stuff. Um, but instead, you can just map glitch the box away and walk right past it. Right here, I'm using map glitch in a way to set up the um, cycles for the rotating platform. So I only held map glitch for about a second when I entered this room, but it makes it so that I can, you know, get across these platforms in one cycle. If I were just to walk in without holding map glitch, that first platform would start rotating while I was on it and I'd end up falling. So it's kind of cool that map glitch has a lot of different uses. You know, it's used to reduce lag, used to, you know, make cycles work out. Skip bosses. It's pretty sweet. So you're spamming jump there on that ladder? Yeah, so uh, it's the optimal way to get up that ladder is to do the same type of up warp I was doing for Ben K skip, where you like click, like glitch out in the bottom of the ladder and you up warp really quick. But I'm not really consistent at that and doing it fast. So, um, would people actually do it for a small ladder like that? Yeah, the world record does that. But the top two world record guys are goddamn insane. So there's a Macquarie I can do in this area to skip this little bit of walking I'm doing, but it doesn't save much time and I'm not consistent at it, so I figured I might as well just do what I normally do. This is an area where uh, I've crashed my game plenty of times because I just like map glitch in like the last three rooms, but if I map glitch in this room, I will soft lock and I have um, no way of avoiding a soft lock other than restarting my console. And if I wasn't saving, you know, I'd have to basically restart the run. But I'm gonna map glitch here, and that's because I'm gonna do another Macquarie. And this Macquarie, if I nail it, um, will be really cool, hopefully. And save about 20 seconds, I believe, 20 to 30 seconds. Um, it's called the Mount Fear Macquarie. And you're gonna notice I'm switching to Yai because all the characters have different distances. Yeah, I knew that wasn't going to work. You know what, I'm actually going to go for it again, because I want to show it off. That's cool. So in order to make this rock despawn, I actually had to like walk through this loading zone and re reload the room. Normally I wouldn't do this, but it's a really cool trick, so I want to try to show it off. If I fail it a second time, I'll just look like a noob. So it looks like you still went through the wall and went up, you just didn't go all the way up, right? Correct. So I, I got the up warp, but I didn't time the B press correctly. So it's a frame-perfect B press, and I just mistimed it. There we go. Nice. So basically it just flies me up this mountain instead of me having to walk up it. You know, I probably lost time because I failed it once, but whatever. I got the trick. And this is a swag strat where you change weapons on the same frame you talk to this witch and your weapons change every frame or something. Aren't I cool? 
Just for style points, or? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. The just... laugh track left, just as you said you were cool. <laughs> I don't think they agree. <laughs> I didn't time that on purpose. So this is the first use of why we needed to collect all that money in the beginning. Um, this is the witch that we give 300 coins to contact some dude in the past, but my understanding is that this dude, that this ghost or whatever is not actually dead. I don't really know. I don't know the lore. It's weird. This is a pretty long mashing scene. It kind of, it's kind of nice that this game has sections like this where you can just like zone out and just mash A because you can grab water and you know wipe your hands off and stuff. But at the same time, it's kind of sucks to have downtime. All I know is that when I see a text box with flashing text, there's going to be a text box with a one in, one in it after, and that's when I need to meet, move. There's the flashing text. There's the one. Time to move. All right, time to do the return, Macquarie. All right, went too far into the door. So I'm trying to get pushed up by that door, but I actually walked too far. Went too far again, huh? So this is like a worst case scenario if you fail the trick. Because normally if you fail the trick, you can just, uh... There we go. So normally if you fail the trick, you can just, uh... Teleport. Because when you teleport to this town that I'm in, you actually get brought right to the door that we're gonna leave. Um, go to a different area. But if you get the if you get this Macquarie that I went through, you actually backtrack through the town. So it, it ends up not really saving that much time. If the teleport... If, like, the dragon teleport cutscene was shorter, it'd actually be faster to just teleport and not even do the Macquarie. But since the teleport cutscene is 30 seconds, it's actually faster to go for that. So it's about 5 seconds if you get a first try, I believe. And again, if you fail it, you just teleport and it's not that big of a deal. Once again, holding a map glitch. Anytime you see a door just pop up like that, now it's holding a map glitch. And right here is kind of the first monkey ass moment for myself because the game can just randomly crash on this uh, mini game I'm about to do. So, bless RNG. Once she gets like halfway up the mountain and it hasn't crashed yet, or the waterfall, then I know I'm good. But it can randomly happen. So, fingers crossed. All right, didn't crash. Cool. I think it would have crashed by now. How often does that happen? It's only happened to me about once or twice. Oh, okay. So, so it's not common, but it can happen. And apparently it's happened to some people like several times like in the same week. So, whoops, I didn't need to read the sign. So I just unlocked the mermaid ability for Yai. I need my nose. Um, and that allows her to swim underwater, which is cool. And I'm going to be using that to... Uh, do a glitch up here and to get into the next uh, castle, which is called Gourmet Sub, which I actually believe is casually the last castle you typically do, um, but I'm doing it second for the sake of speed. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is where we learn how to get mini AD, right? Not yet. In about Probably like 10 or 20 minutes. It's, not a, it's not a gourmet? No, it's uh, afterwards. It's after gourmet. We learn it. Yeah, in the old route, or the older route, I guess, um, you would typically do this, what I'm doing after doing another dungeon first. Um, but again, it's faster to do it in this order. And actually, this upcoming dungeon is different in both routes because you have different um, abilities unlocked. Uh, typically, in the old route, you would have the mini Abisamaru ability that Jim referred to earlier. And that allows you to do these um, clips to the wall that you are not, that I'm unable to do right now because I haven't learned that ability. So I actually have to do a different trick called Mermaid Clip, which is still not very bad. And I believe it's actually faster than the mini Abisamaru strip. So right here, I'm going to grab an extra life for safety, because in the last, the second to last dungeon, I do two death warps on purpose, and if I lose all my lives, um, I have to go back to my last save, so I'm not trying to do that. Um, another thing I'll mention is that in the last area I was in, there's a, another Macquarie you can do, and the trick is called button skip, and it skips that red button I hit to open the door. Um, 
you like, I think it requires two frame perfect inputs. You have to do the Macquarie, um, so you fly into like the middle of the water, and then when you're in the middle of the water, you have to like press C up at a particular time. Please get in the door. All right, gourmet sub filled with food. If it wasn't obvious from the name. So up here is mermaid clip. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna try to go perpendicular with the wall and time uh, press B and then time holding down. There we go. Until you get it when the screen shakes. And right here, you just swim in this area and you like up warp. Chip clip. <laughs> Chip clip. This is a going on stream, not Mario. So you'll notice that, um, or you may have noticed that I said you need a 1100 Ryu throughout the game, but I actually only start by collecting a thousand. That's because you can make up the missing coins by doing the route that I'm doing through this, uh, this castle. There was a, actually a route before this one that had to do a, you would, oh, whoops, I messed that up. You would do the, um, same amount of, dude, all right, I'm just gonna kill you slowly. I don't care. These guys require three hits each, and if you kill them, if you hit them with the fire you, you can, uh, kill them in one shot, but I'm doing this absolutely terribly. I suppose for a beginner, you're trying to farm more coins at the, at the beginning, right? Yeah, if you're like just starting off, you can just like farm in a few extra coins. You know, go to the room once more to be extra safe. Can you run out and not have enough? Yeah. Um, uh, worst thing that would happen is you probably have to just like keep reloading an area to try to get enemies to spawn that you kill, and hopefully they have coin drops. Um, but once you enter the dungeon, that requires you to throw the fire Ryu, so you need to have six Ryo. Um, I keep saying Ryu because I play Street Fire all the time, but they're actually called Ryo with an O, not a U. Um, as long as you get into that dungeon with the fire Ryo, um, you're good, because you it's not really important that you have it after that. So you'll notice that I, you may have noticed that I fell off the chopsticks um, one of the previous times I went through that room. It's actually not that big of a deal, because I can just you know go through that other room and collect some extra coins. Um, but if I fell off the chopstick that last time I went through, I'd actually have to go back to the door and keep re-entering the room because there's no other way to get back to that other than just slowly riding it all the way. Riding those uh, bowls of soup or whatever they are. So here's another enemy. I don't know his name, but it's another bad guy. And there's actually three tech skips that I can get in this uh, cutscene. The first one's coming up. Technically there's four, but I only go for three because if I get one of them, I would have to... Alright, I missed it. If I get one of them, I would have to like purposely watch another cutscene that I try to skip later on to make the story progress in a certain way. I don't really know, but I just don't go, all for, go for all of them for story progression reasons. Alright, 0 for 2 when the tech skips. So if I got the first tech skip, I'd skip all the texts of the girl just talking by herself, and this guy would just pop up right next to him. Um, I think their names are Lily and Dancing. And um, if I got the second one, I would have skipped all this cutscene, or all this text, basically. Don't know if I got it. We'll see. No, I missed it. So if I got the last tech skip, I would have skipped all this text, but I missed it. And obviously it's not good to go for a tech skip and get the pause and then miss it because not only do you miss a tech skip but you lose like four seconds from pausing when you don't have to. And this is the long um, cutscene that we skip um, by holding map glitch in that big field about 10 minutes into the run. And I'll just uh, let this play out for itself while I drink some water. This song is a banger. I know, I glanced over, and we haven't slept, by the way. Um, <laughs> we got stuff planned the entire night, and obviously there's a bit of delays with the, the schedule. I have my run in, in a little bit, and 
So we haven't slept, I'm seeing the sun rise, and this is when you get a little anxiety for, <laughs> yeah. from just staying up all night. It's been a while since I've seen the sunrise. I'm not that much of a DJ. <laughs> Unless it's winter and I go to work before the freaking sun rises. All right, so um, every time you do an impact fight, and this is impact, by the way, this big robot. Um, anytime you do an impact fight, there's always like this like auto scrolling section for whatever reason, and it's how you like uh, get the ammo that you use for the fight. Um, so if you notice, I'm like collecting those coins in the top left, and those are actually like my ammo, and my weapons. Um, and this first boss, it's not really important to have a lot of ammo because you don't ever fire your ammo. You just uh, sucker punch him. <laughs> You'll see. But uh, in the final boss. You want to make sure you have a sufficient amount of coins because they can be pretty tough if you don't have a lot of them. We're basically, just around, cruising around the countryside, just slamming houses and people's buildings. Is really... Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but it looks like I'm just killing innocent people right now <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> and you'll notice I'm tripping over these wires. That's, I'm not trying to do that. That's a skill issue. Yeah, I'm bad. As easy as this is, you can still trip over stuff. And so this is. Thai Samba 2. I don't know why it's 2, but it just is. And um, there's a technique, or there's like a combo you can do in this, like a special combo you can do in these fights where if you press C up, C down, C up, A, um, and in, in sequence, you do like a bunch of punches. And you can actually chain those punches together and really drain their health fast, so I'm hopefully going to be doing that. And I actually use his health at the top to time when to do the next one because every punch combo does 210 damage. So the next one's 1260. And then this is, after this, there'll be a intentional cutscene. Like this is a scripted cutscene in the fight. I think once you get a below 1100 health, this happens. But you can actually continue the chain down here. Thank you. I think that works. Wow, I... Oh, I think I was supposed to do an extra combo before I punched him. I messed up. That's weird. So that was supposed to kill him, but I messed up. And now I have no idea how to do this part casually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit here and wait until he pops up my face again, and then punch him. Come here! Alright, so normally after the laser he's supposed to die, but I somewhere along the line I messed up the the damage. But all in all that went okay. I would be pretty triggered if I was doing a real run and I did that. Because these fights are actually relatively straightforward. So right here I'm gonna be holding map glitch out of this cutscene to um it's funny because I'm saving to be safe, but I'm doing this to skip a text box where it has asks you to save, so for the sake of speed, I'm skipping it. But normally right here, there's a, a text box that pops up like a little cutscene, but if you hold map glitch, it doesn't show up. Oh god, I... I don't remember where to teleport! Yeah, I... <laughs> when you teleport, you have to like press left or right a certain amount of times to go to the right area, obviously, and I can't read Japanese, so I have no idea where I'm actually going. Uh, so I have notes that tell me how many times to press left or right before I hit A at certain points, and my that's phone was locked. That's another, another, another thing. When I started learning that game, I was trying to use people's VODs to know where to go and what to do, and it was so confusing because they went so fast. Basically, the menuing, you wouldn't even see what location has been picked. So I had to go frame by frame and hope that I can actually see what they're doing. Yeah, basically at that point you just have to hope that you can see the name of the place that they're teleporting to, and yeah. then try to make sure you're going to the same place. And I have to recognize an alphabet that I don't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. <laughs> so right here I'm going to be doing a trick that's, this is the only place that's done in the run, it's called Time Stop. So when you play the flute, um, time t typically stops while the... Um, while like she's playing the flute and the dragon comes down, but if you cancel the flute animation um, by 
There's a couple of different ways you can do it, but in this way I did it by uh, climbing the top of the, of the ladder right there. It actually freezes um, all the stuff, so those enemies... Whoops, I just wasn't map glitch right here, so I'm going to do that real quick. Thankfully, it's, <laughs> it's okay if you don't map glitch when you're supposed to, because you can most likely just re-enter the area and do it. So yeah. there's the platforms wouldn't fall on the bridge, the enemies wouldn't attack you. Right, so when the time was stopped, the enemies didn't move, and the biggest reason I do it is to save lag from the planks on the bridges falling. It's funny how many of the strats in this game are to reduce lag. I don't really notice it until I point them all out. Do you ever use camera to reduce lag as well? Um, sometimes I like zoom in and stuff out of habit, but honestly I don't think it's to reduce lag. I think it's just to give me like better visuals and stuff, I don't know. I'm sure there are camera kind of manipulations you can do throughout the run. Um, so right there, this is the area where you would go to the second uh, castle normally, Ghost Toys. Um, but you can't enter Ghost Toys until you have your mini Abisumaru ability, because there's a little cubby hole that a normal sized person cannot fit through. So normally I believe you're supposed to go over there, see the cubby hole, be bewildered by it, and then go talk to that old man who tells you about this dwarf that you can talk to, I believe. He might tell you something different, I don't know. And so this is the town that this route actually saves you from having to backtrack to twice. Um, it's Zazen. So in the old route, you would backtrack once to do the mini Abisu mini game, and then you'd backtrack a second time to talk to this dude and go to um, the buys in an area. But um, with this route, you only have to teleport once. It's nifty. And I have no idea what they're saying to each other. I have no idea what's going on in the lore at this point. This mashing game. So this is the dwarf that you would actually um, do the fishing mini game for to get the log that you would use to beat Ben K. Um, but I didn't talk to her because I did Ben K's kid. I think this actually might be the first place where we start to use Abyssamaru in the run. He's a goofball, let me tell you. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> You're going to be hearing plenty of that. Yeah, so once I uh, get this um, ability, the game really starts to open up and just get, you know, blast wide open and the pace really picks up. Gets wild. Yeah, it's really fun, actually. Unfortunately, the trick, like the glitch that you have to do to, you know, abuse the mini Abisu ability, it's really hard <laughs> and um, requires a lot of muscle memory. So if I'm not, like, feeling it, it might take me a few tries to get it, but... I'm typically pretty good at the trick. And you also want a controller with a pretty good dead zone. Right. So, um, right here I'm in the cabinet of some dude, and I need to collect eight sweets to unlock the mini Abisu ability. And I want to do that without taking three hits like I just did. Um, if I take three hits, I die. I have to redo this. Okay. So this is what happens when he sees you. <laughs> he drops exploding batteries. And these sweets, when they drop, they're random. Um, but the amount of time, like the time when they drop, is not random. So they drop every seven or eight seconds, I believe. And only one can be spawned at a time. So if one, like if one falls right here like that, I can wait a little bit to get it. But I need to get it before the next one spawns, or else I'll miss it and essentially lose seven or eight seconds. And so one more to go. I got bodied. One more, and I made it. Okay, that would have been kind of embarrassing to die to. Alright, so now we have the Mini Abisu ability, and you are going to see the glitch called Eddy Slide right away. And so I guess to describe how to do the glitch in very loose terms, you turn into his Mini ability by pressing C up, and then while you're neutral on the stick, you hop. As soon as you land from the hop, you flick the stick for I believe, is one frame, and then you go back to neutral. When you go back to neutral, you hit C up again, and then you can uh, move the analog stick to slide a piece of Maru very fast. Typically, you're not able to move while you're transforming, but... Allegedly one frame. Yeah, I, I don't know what the frame data is. So I got the trick right there. 
Um, but the wall blocked me, which is a classic in this game. So normally to access this dude, uh, you'd actually have to get the fourth character named Sasuke, and I believe he has an ability that lets him jump really high, and uh, that's how you would get up there. But we can just abuse the slide. And that's the cucumber for 800 coins I had to buy. So at this point, I really only need the six coins to enter the ghost castle um, dungeon because of the fiery requirement. Sweet, that one's really annoying to miss. And up here, I'm going to be talking to a Kappa. Yes, a Kappa. <laughs> Not the Twitch emo, the mythological creature. And I don't know what he gives me, but he progresses the story for some reason. I don't know. I think I give him the cucumber. Um, so right here, I'm doing... Going to an area I believe is called Bison, and there's three Macquarie's I go for, and if I get all of them, I believe it saves like a minute over the walking, it saves a bunch of time. And there's an invisible wall in front of the store I need to slide through. I don't know when you can normally access this area, like, uh, like I don't know why in the other route. In the other route you actually don't have to go for this slide, the door doesn't have the invisible wall, but I don't know why you have to go for this route. I'm assuming it's just the order of the dungeons. So I got the Macquarie right there, but I actually had a terrible angle, so I actually... What you want to do is like, uh... You kind of like slide along the roofs of the buildings and you essentially skip how to do this. So right here I'm doing a mini abyssal slide, and sometimes when you do a mini abyssal slide in the water, excuse me, a water slide, um, you like levitate as well as get a lot of speed. So in order to like do the backup, you have to get the levitating version. And I don't know what causes you to levitate versus... Um, just slide on top of the water. So that's the second Macquarie um, out of three. And then in this door is the last one. I actually messed up my movement. Don't let it move along the wall before I do that. Right, I'm gonna go for this one once more just because the door is right here and it looks kind of cool. But if I fail it, I'll also walk through. Because this one is probably the worst, the one I'm worst at. I got it. Terrible angle. <laughs> you want to be right next to this door so you don't have to walk all the way over here. But hey, I got it. Those are pretty cool, though, those launches. Yeah, they're sweet. And uh, and keep in mind, they're, they're frame perfect, so like there's little room for air. Right here is probably one of my favorite glitches in the game. It's called Superman, maybe. Essentially what you do is you uh, do an Abisumaru slide, and you end up on a slope that would make you slide on your stomach. And for whatever reason, if you do that, it makes you fly. And you can just get up here. And this actually doesn't save that much time. I believe it saves... Like, if you fail the mini slide, like, once or twice, you end up losing time over just walking through this area casually. But that's a pretty cool strat, so I go for it. And right here, I'm holding map glitch because um, the door to this dungeon is not open. And I believe in order to open the door for this dungeon, I need to unlock the bazooka for Yai. But I don't unlock that. So I just uh, hold map glitch so the door doesn't spawn. And if I accidentally let go of map glitch, I can just empty slide through the door anyway. So it's not a big deal. Right, so this is Festival Castle, I believe it's called. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel bad because I feel like I should know more about this game. <laughs> I just know how to play it. Festival Temple. Festival Temple. Alright, cool. Two first try slides. I'm gonna grab that coin to be safe. And again, I have like no idea what the casual route is for any of these castles. Not a clue. But the speedrunning strat for this castle, you freaking breeze through it really quickly. It's like a minute and a half that you're in this castle if you do it well. Excluding the final boss. The final boss takes a while. But. So I actually... I believe this upcoming trick is called a flutter jump. And you do it by belly sliding into a ladder. And for whatever reason, that makes it so that when you do your next jump, you 
um, jump infinitely into the air, but it has the potential for soft locks if you don't have a roof that you can bog your head onto or a slope that you can walk onto. For the past 10 minutes, the pace of the run has gone a lot faster. We're seeing a lot of action back to back to back, the slides, and there's not, not much stopping, unlike the beginning. Right. Yeah, like once you get the Ebby slide, it just, the run picks up so fast. It's really fun. So I actually got like the first cycle I could get on the fan thing with the slope on it. So right here, I'm just trying to like wiggle so that I pop up onto the thing so I can walk. It's kind of annoying. It's not consistent. But just like that, I'm at the end of the castle. And I'm about to fight the worst boss in the game, uh, Sarami. And the reason why this boss sucks is because you have to do an Ebby slide with an absolutely terrible camera. So you're basically only relying on mus muscle memory. And the wall that you have to clip through is not, like you have to hold up left rather than straight up, at least for the way I do it. I'm sure there is a setup you can do where it's relatively easier in regards to that, but this boss sucks. I hope I get it well. Yeah, and so, so right there I actually got a slide, but I didn't clip. Unfortunately. And like once he starts throwing the plates at you, it's over. Like it just becomes such a nightmare. Man, so I'm getting the slides, but I'm not clipping through the wall. It's such a such a pain in the butt. Let's see, got the slide, didn't clip. So like this is the casual way of beating this boss. You you know, sit here and hit it one at a time. And each one of those things do one damage. And I believe it has nine health. But what I'm trying to do is get onto this middle platform so I can get onto the same level. There we go, we got it, finally. So now I'm up with the boss, up in its face. And um, this allows me to throw fire. All right, I need to actually pay attention. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to play it safe and just get him casually. So this boss can actually... Oh, God. Okay, I'm good. This boss can soft lock if you do too much damage to it. So normally, like I said, you're only supposed to be able to hit the plates back at him and the plates do one damage each. But if you do this glitch and get up onto the boss platform, you can throw fire at you at the boss, which does three damage each. But if you damage the boss in such a way that, I think the boss has nine total health, and so let's say you do eight health, eight damage to the boss, and so it normally only need one hit. If you throw a fire at you at it, so you end up doing 11 damage to it or whatever, it ends up like, kind of like soft lock in the game and the boss just like spins in a circle and doesn't do anything and you have to, do an Ebby slide to void out and respawn the boss. It's pain in the butt. So I just took it safe and just hit him one at a time because I couldn't really keep track. So right there is another tech skip that I could have gone for um, that I missed. You would skip all this text right here and it would automatically skip to this lady laughing, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, that's a laugh. So I'm kind of bummed I haven't gotten any... Well, I did get the Dragon Tech skip, so that's the most prominent one, I suppose, but none of the other ones I've gotten. There is one tech skip at the very end of the run. Um, it saves 30 seconds, and it can either be a run killer or a lifesaver. And um, there is a visual cue for it, so it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, I'll point it out. It's right before the final, right before the final boss. And the reason why I ended that previous boss on Yai is so I can instantly, uh, I think I hit right once, but I don't remember. Right twice, good thing I looked it up. Um, the reason why I switched to Yai to kill the boss is because um, I don't want to have to switch to where to teleport. I want to be able to just pop right out and teleport right away. She's the one that plays the flute that calls the, the dragon, right? Correct. She's the only character that can do that. Yeah, like all the items you get throughout the game, they're for a specific character, typically. I was supposed to map glitch here, but I forgot. You can reduce lag. 
And there's actually a Macquarie you can go for here to skip this short walk, but I don't know how to do it, so I don't go for it. Wait, wait. So if you go through a, a walkway as Mini of Gisu, um, the fastest way to get back to being Biggie again is actually by doing a slide. And so that's why I went for a slide. Well, I don't know if it was obvious, but I went for a slide right there rather than just teleport transforming. Dude. Right here I'm trying to do an heavy slide under this wall. And I don't need a good one, I just need a one that moves me just enough. There are good and bad heavy slides that you can get, and I don't exactly know what causes a good one versus a bad one. Wow, my health is trash. Right, so here is where we use Fire Ryu. This is the only Ryo. This is the only place where you use it throughout the entire well then it's mandatory to use throughout the entire run. You need to light those torches. And uh, this castle, specifically this room, probably has the worst slides in the game. It's really easy to really easy to get blocked on the wall, but thankfully I didn't get blocked right there. The camera in this game is also terrible. So sometimes you'll like hit C left or C right to try to move the camera, and it'll just like start spinning around you infinitely. <laughs> so it's really fun. We're spoiled with Mario. Yeah. Well, bring Mario camera into this game, please. You know I'm gonna do that, right? <laughs> I wish they would. <laughs> so right here I'm just chilling, picking up uh, the camera item that you need to complete this dungeon. And if you sit in a, if you sit and see up right here like I am, uh, you can, or like in the first person mode or whatever, you uh, can avoid, you can skip the animation of you celebrating when you collect that item. But since normally you're not moving during these text boxes, you're normally standing there with the celebration, um, you actually don't get the item in your inventory until you skip past those text boxes. Wow. This is not good. Alright, cool. Two more slides. And then the dungeon's relatively fun. And for some reason this room is like so dark on this monitor so I can like hardly even see what I'm going against. But So right here I'm actually um, out of the room and I need to clip through a invisible wall to get back into the room. And so I can't see the wall that you're you know, trying to clip through, so that's really fun. I think this one you need to be pretty efficient, right, to actually save time? Yeah. Um, when you're first starting out, you can actually skip these last two slides that I'm doing. Um, the first ones I did are mandatory, I believe, but um, these last two you can skip. So right here, I'm getting the trick, but it's getting blocked. It's right there. I got it, thankfully. So right that I normally have a split right here, and that split has killed so many runs. So, I mean, that wasn't great, <laughs> but it could have been a lot worse. Um, right here is a kill all room, but I can actually map glitch and uh, get into the loading zone. If I turn small. So right there's another, there, there's an instance of me uh, using the Evie slide to move while I'm transforming to, you know, save time. So I grab those health just to be safe, because I am going to be doing a death warp up here, but if I mess up the trick, um, then it would suck. So I'd rather just have a bunch of extra health and lose time than die trying to do the trick. One thing I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when you're in dungeons, the, the music starts off pretty basic, but then as you progress your way through the dungeon, it actually adds more and more instruments. I think is actually sweet. So, um, the version of the song that plays like right at the end of the dungeon is absolutely fire. So right here I'm going to be doing map glitch um, to despawn this poison water that's normally here. But if I were to try to walk through the doorway I came in after map glitching, I'd actually soft lock. So this is where I'm going to death warp to uh, not soft lock and save time. So normally you'd want to, you know, either have half a heart or die after collecting the coin or the key at the top, but just playing it safe, losing a bit of time. So that was a terrible attempt at jumping over those spikes, but it's really hard to jump over them. 
another kill on him here. I suppose if you didn't get bopped, you would have made it on time for the cycle. Uh, for that rotating platform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that rotating platform, you can make it. You can still make it if you get bopped, but you have to like get bopped by the top of the spikes rather than on the side, like I did. And then, yeah, you can avoid dropping into the water like I did, but it doesn't really save that much time. And there's actually um, two different strats you can go for. Um, there's one more death warp that I'm going to be going for up here. Or actually, I go for it at the very end of the dungeon. But you can go for it right here and not go for it at the end of the dungeon. But I believe it's not quite as optimal. So like if I, for whatever reason, messed up the previous part of the dungeon and I had really low health right here, I would just do the death warp right here and, you know, just take the time loss. But I got plenty of health. So at this point, does your real count matter? No. It's just nice to have for Ryu hovers and stuff, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think it's absolutely mandatory to have a certain amount at this point. So right here I'm going to be map glitching, and it's actually really weird because it's almost like there's two loading zones for this door. Um, there's a loading zone like behind the door, and then there's a loading zone for if you open the door. Um, if I open that door, I would softlock the game. But if you run into the corner, um, before you let go of map glitch, you can go through the other loading zone and don't soft lock. It makes a lot of sense. And I've actually lost runs from letting go of C right slightly too early there and soft locking. It's so much fun. So this is another room where everything is the same as long as you do it the same every time. So I may look like a pro right here, but this is just the same shit I always do. That went really well. He's much better at this billiard than real life. <laughs> Shut up, Jim. So right here I'm going to map glitch to reduce lag and increase my lines because normally there's like rotating... That's not good. Normally there's like rotating spikes right there um, that I'd have to get hit by or try to jump over, but I can unload them. And again, the only reason why I'm map glitching here is because I'm going to be death warping. If I wasn't death warping and I death warped earlier, I would not map glitch here and just walk to the, norm the room normally so that I could leave the room. So typically at this point I would have no lives, um, but I grab that extra life before so. And there's actually another extra life you can grab in this dungeon, but I'm fine. If you're a real tryhard, there's a, a piece of slide you can do to avoid the short walk, and you just instead go right to the store. But it literally saves like a second if you get a first try, so. Alright, so this is the penultimate boss of the game. Um, this is Darumanyo, and he is a ghost robot or something, and I need to make him transparent and vulnerable by flashing this camera I got at him. Like it's like longer than normal. I wonder if having the expansion for the controller pack and like messes with some of the timing in this run because I feel like some like mini cutscenes are taking longer than normal. Well, that was one of them right there. The character is actually made based off of Daruma dolls. Oh really? Modern, yeah. That makes sense. Wow, please, going on, stop rotating the camera like a madman. Wow, this is a terrible fight. I'm not doing this justice. To be fair, I don't really know how to do this fight very optimally, but this is definitely not it. This is another fight where uh, you want to end his Yai. So, I think one more hit will do it, I believe. Yeah. And you can actually optimize this fight very slightly depending on where you kill him because as you'll notice this miracle item spawns and then you run up to it to grab it. And you know, the eye will run exactly from where you kill the boss from. So if you can kill the boss and be close to that item, it can save actually a significant amount of time. But I believe that is the fourth and final miracle item I need. And now I can go to the final dungeon and save Japan.
from becoming a stage or something. What time are we at? Minute and uh, hour and nine. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's okay. Should finish underestimate. What's the world record for this? 111 to 57 by two people, Claude and Nazar. They're tied? They're tied in the second. I forget who has the better decimal. I believe it's Zar. Alright, so this is the last time I'm going to be teleporting. And I'm going back to the snow town where I did the uh, first big Macquarie of the mountain. It is pretty hot on stage. I'm dying right now, dude. <laughs> I can feel my face like getting flushed. <laughs> I'm surprised my hands aren't more sweaty, to be honest. More sweaty? Sweatier. Grammar's hard. So when I walk through this next door, I'm going to be map glitching again. And I'm actually going to be trying to open, go through the next loading zone at the same time I'm trying to go through the loading zone at the same time as I let go of map glitch because that'll drag me out of the cutscene that I skipped um, after the Taisamba 2 fight, which is like the big robotic fish dude. Um, if you remember, I held C right in map glitch to skip a cutscene that popped up, which is that cutscene. And that cutscene is actually still waiting to be triggered um, if you walk into that room. So you actually have to map glitch again and then make sure you are inside the next loading zone so you don't trigger the cutscene and lose all that time that you saved by skipping it earlier. And I have um, done that in runs and <laughs> missed PV by like less than 10 seconds and I'm pretty sure that loses more than 10 seconds. That's right, I actually forgot, forgot to talk about the new glitch that was just found. Oh my god, you are right. There was a new glitch found about two, three, four days ago and it allows you to skip one of the impact boss fights. Um, in, the, in the boss fight after Gourmet's sub, you actually don't get any item from um, killing, killing the um, boss. All it does is progress the story. And I don't really know the details of it, but if you like save before the boss, after during one of those three tech skips that I missed, um, you... Uh, can like reload the game and you'll like skip that entire fight and you'll skip the the singing cutscene and stuff and it saves like four minutes apparently. So four minute time save if you get a frame perfect tech skip. Sounds really fun. And what's the time what's the time loss? So it's 40, 40 seconds? Yeah, forty seconds or so. And then you have the time loss of uh, like I said, typically you don't have a controller pack when you do runs this game, but in order for that glitch to work you need to have, have a controller pack and oh, darn it. Whole room perfect except the last jump. So I think it loses like 40 seconds, like setting up the trick, and then um, you get like extra text boxes throughout the run, so I'm not exactly sure how much time you lose. But yeah, pretty sweet. Literally just found like three or four days ago, which is pretty wild. Probably the biggest time save in this game found in like 10 years or so. Oh man, getting blocked by this wall sucks. There's a hoax where if you re-enter the room it'll work. I'm gonna prove that it works right here. First try. Well, I need to get the slide first. So the reason why getting blocked sucks in those is because you're coming in with a certain camera and after getting blocked basically the camera turns around so you don't have the same angle. Right. Your re right. And I can't do the setup on that particular um, slide, but there is like a guaranteed setup that you can do where you, you like line up, you like sitting, stand against the wall and then turn mini and like walk down for one frame and then do the trick. And so like if you get the trick, oh my god, the camera, please. 
Um, trigger? <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but that last uh, cubby hole I just slid into, that's actually the first place where Ebby sliding, I think, was discovered to be like useful. Because I think someone got like a really bad Ebby slide into that cubby and they were like, oh man, I can go out of bounds. Whatever else I can do this. And it just kind of like blew open the game from there. So there is an enemy slide you can go for over here on the right, but it's very easy to get blocked on this wall. And the, the other stride is so free, might as well just go for it as I mess it up. You can just like rub against the wall right here and just like walk through it. Normally it doesn't take three tries, but... Alright, coming up is the last slide in the game. Feel the music building up. Yeah, it's really fun to be on PB pace and you're already nervous, and then you hear this music playing in the background. It's really fun. The slide sucks. There we go. So, no more slides. Cool. So, coming up, there's a rotating room, and it's very important that I don't get a landing animation so I can make the optimal cycle. If I get a landing animation, I won't make it and it loses a handful of time, and it's annoying. All right, I didn't get one, cool. So that allows me to, Never mind. Normally you can, <laughs> normally you can make it around that. Maybe I'll get it this time. <laughs> the range on the stick is trash. Sure, bud. There we go. Jesus. Probably the only Goemon player that has a steel stick. I'm actually using an OEM stick for this. Oh. Yeah, I prefer OEM. For the AB slides? Yeah. So this is the last text cuts, uh, last text skip in the game. Missed it. Cool. So if you get it, you skip all this text right here and it saves about 30 seconds or so, which is a huge chunk right at the end of the run for basically free. But I missed it. It's okay. Now you can see all the text that would be skipped if I got it. And if I the lore correct, understand the lore correctly, I believe this is like the bad guys' last attempt, Hail Mary, at convincing us to join them in their quest to conquer Japan. Um, they're trying to have like a big performance, I guess. I don't really know. Sorry for doing that right into the mic. Gorgeous, my stage. Cat gem. And yes, you watch this every run. And no, you never get tired of it. My stage. I joined them. <laughs> Same. I, I believe uh, Abisumaru actually wants to join them right here in this cutscene, and but we're trying to snap him out of it. <laughs> Alright, so um, the end of this run actually has a lot of cutscenes. So we have that long cutscene that we just watched, and now there's another cutscene right here of the impact fight again. So it's kind of nice because you get the nerves down if you're on good pace, you know, you can relax. You give me your best pronunciation of the last boss, his name? De toi. I believe. Any Frenchmen in the chat? How bad was that pronunciation? Oh, you're, you missed the, the last syllable, the le, de toi. Le. De toi. Le. Thank you, my French Canadian friend. So normally in a casual playthrough, you'd see this song three, four times? Three times. Yeah. And now that's 
what's being skipped by the new skip? Uh, Correct. The uh, the new skip that was found a few days ago would actually skip the second one. So you'd still have to watch this one. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It's a bit redundant, but you have to watch the same, same, same thing. Yeah, I don't know why they make... I'm assuming they don't expect you to get through the game in one day. <laughs> so they probably expect you to watch this on different days of your the casual playthrough. No, three times within an hour. And again, there's another uh, like auto scroller type of thing, but you can lose time here. There's a uh, gap you need to jump over, and uh, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So you're still charging fuel for the last boss. Correct. So every time I destroy an item, you'll notice the counter in the top left goes up, and that's like my my ammo for killing the final, killing the next boss. And uh, it's actually important that I have quite a bit of ammo. If you're there's practice, there's like practice codes you can use to practice this game on the Game Shark and on the EverDrive, and um, when you practice this boss, you actually have significantly less coins than you would normally in a run, so it's actually really tough to practice this, but if you can get good at killing this boss in the practice run with the less coins, then it should be free to do it in the actual run. And so this final boss actually has two different forms or phases, I don't really know what you'd call it. Um, but the first one is called Balbera, and it's like this big peach rocket ship that they've been flying around in. And um, the goal for this fight is to... So you can only damage this boss when it opens up its quote-unquote chest, I'll call it. And you can only shoot the middle of it when it's exposed. And so in order to keep it exposed, you have to shoot and destroy all these pink ships that pop out of it and circle it because you're essentially skipping a bunch of the phases that you normally have to go through in this fight. So hopefully I can do it. Unfortunately, I have to mash Z to shoot, so it's a bit awkward. And I want to try to avoid shooting that red ball in the middle, because then I won't be doing damage to him. And again, his damage is in, is in the top of his health. All right, so I think that's the last pink ship. I actually did a really good job destroying them while I was doing damage to him. So right here, he should open right back up, and casually this won't happen. And to do this laser shot, uh, you have to do a circle with the C button. C up, C right, C down, C left really quickly, and then hit C. And it does 400 damage, so it's nifty. Alright, that was slow, but one cycle. You can lose like two minutes if you mess that up, so that went really well. And this final phase is significantly easier than this one. Um, it's essentially the same type of strat that I'm going to be doing for Taisama 2, where I chain those punches together. And, um, yeah, so this final boss can actually be relatively easy. As long as you don't drop an input. It kind of sucks, because like, when you get to this point in the run, you're just like, all. Oh, it's like only your fault if you mess up. Like, you can't blame anything, including that right there. It's always fun to blame something else for your mistakes. Alright, so as long as I don't drop this, it's GG. And again, I'm using his health to know um, when to time the next one. So each attack does 210 damage, so 1260. 1050. You should prepare eight, the timer eight, here. No, actually, uh, there's like a minute long cutscene that you wait after you kill this guy, so there's no rush on being ready for the timer. Yeah, it's kind of like an arbitrary place um, where I believe like the Japanese community decided to start ending runs. I don't believe they used to end runs in this area, but they do now. So that's the, that's the final boss, that's the game. Um, 90% of Mystical Ninja Star and going on. And it's below estimate. Not a great time, but I'll take it. So yeah, there's like literally nothing for me to do at this point. Um, I literally just like wait for a minute before the before I'm supposed to end the timer. And I'll... And I'll be sure to give you a heads up. The, the guy explodes and the screen turns white. I guess in the meantime, if you're interested in looking into the mystical ninja lesser and going on <coughs> speedruns, uh, there's a website I think the community is working on that's called mnsgruns.com. So that's yeah. MNSG, like mystical ninja. Staring Goem on runs.com. By the way, time is coming up soon. Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. But yeah, I will give a shout out to that website after. Yep. So time is when the screen goes white. Um, I'll, I'll say it. And 
time. And that's a pretty good time. Not bad. Nine minutes, nine minutes off my PB, but whatever. I finished the run. This is one of those runs where as long as you finish it, it's cool. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm glad I got to showcase this run. Hopefully I inspired some people to check it out, at least casually. Um, really cool game. Again, I haven't played it casually, so I can't say um, how much fun it is, but I've heard it's really fun, and the speedrun's definitely fun. So, uh... Alright. Yeah, to shout out that website real quick, um, it's called MN... SG runs, and it's being started by a new community member named Cactus. Um, and it's very bare bones right now, but hopefully it'll get better and better. And all the, on there you'll find the Discord where there's obviously more information. And obviously don't forget that we're doing this uh, to benefit Urban Arts. Uh, we're now at $13,650.49 on our goal of 30000 Reminder that today is the start of the SM64 120 LTA, so we're excited for that. The whole venue is excited for that. There's a lot of nice, great contestants that are going to be part of this. Uh, upcoming, we have a couple runs before that, and I will be again on stage with, hopefully, Yale, if he doesn't pass out since then. Uh, I think, I, think I can make it to <laughs> uh, For an Ape Escape run, and I think we have, if I'm not mistaken, coming up, uh, I'm blanking. Blue Flame? I don't think I've ever heard of the game before, but I think that's what it is. And it's uh, Shift, right? Sure. I can't, I'm, I, don't, I don't remember. Blue Fire by Textro, I believe. There you go. Sorry if I said the name wrong. I heard it through my headphones. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, um, again, thanks for watching. I'm really glad I got to finish running out soft walking because I would have sucked. <laughs> so, uh, That's it, yeah. I guess. Yeah, this is a pretty long final cutscene, so there's, I don't think we should watch the whole thing. Although there is some sick music. Is that the part where it's a bit inappropriate? Doesn't he like go mini a bee and like uh, goes yeah. over some girl skirt to take a picture? Yeah, we might want to uh, <laughs> cut the gameplay before the uh, credits start to roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, so uh, signing off. I'm Yale underscore underscore. This is Vaughn Jim, and thanks for watching. See you later.